Older generations of Reddit, who are the I don't use computers people of your time? When remote control TVs came out, I suggested that my father buy one. And he said said, it will be a cold day in hell when I'm too lazy to tell one of you boys to get up and change the channel. It was such an amazing sentence that I committed it to memory, and I still remember it word for word 50 years later. From his point of view, he already had remote control TV. Why should he pay extra to have it automated? My mom was just telling me about when answering machines were new, and how people were so fearful of them and refused to leave a message. She got promoted at a job because she didn't mind calling clients and leaving messages. I bought my grandmother an answering machine in 2005. She had refused to get one before that despite several of her children begging her to invest in one. I got her a $10 one from Walmart. I told her that I had set it up for her and she asked me where it was. She was under the impression that answering machines were about the size of a toaster oven. After some questions I also learned that she had objected to getting one for so long because she was concerned about how much counter space she thought it would take up. But she also used the same bath water for her a week at a time and kept her hearing aid batteries, all of them, not just the ones she wasn't currently using, in the freezer so they would last longer. So who knows? Edit, because everyone keeps asking, some of the older alkaline batteries would slowly discharge over time. You could slow that down by storing the ones you weren't using in the freezer. It didn't make them last a lot longer, but it did give a slightly longer shelf life. However, my grandmother would keep all of her batteries in the freezer, and not have any batteries in her hearing aids at all. As you can guess, this didn't improve her hearing, no matter how long the batteries were lasting in the freezer. You reminded of something, most because of the misunderstanding. When I was growing up, I'd go to my dad's on the weekends and over the summer, divorced parents. At some point, he got rid of cable, which was fine because internet, and he could go to grandpa's to watch the game, and I could record any shows I wanted to watch at mom's with the DVR. I went to college and moved in with dad because he was closer. Started missing my shows. A few years after Netflix became a thing I remember mentioning it to him but he was fully against it. Didn't want it at all. A little while later I brought it up again, by this time I had a job, and he says, well it's your money, so I got an account. He's watching me go through everything and just kinda scoffing thinking I'm wasting my money until he asks, and how much are you gonna have to pay for all this $8, still scoffing, he's like per title nope, per month, that got his attention. He though every show you wanted to watch you had to pay separately for. And since he actually likes a lot of shows and was in reality watching the Matt Grandpas, not just the game, well, now I watch on his account. Some people still had outdoor toilets and were laughing at those who had them installed inside because they are pooping their own houses. I lived on a homestead for a little while. I had an outdoor pit privy toilet. I hand carved the toilet seat myself. Sometimes I miss watching the sunset while taking a dump. It was way better than being stuck in a small room reading reddit on my phone. Unless it was raining. Wiping while holding an umbrella is trickier than it looks. When I was a kid, late 50s early 60s, seat belts in cars were an option. Lots of people thought they were unnecessary and refused to pay extra for the meters and windshield defoggers were likewise optional. My parents bought a new 1964 Plymouth Valiant and didn't get the option windshield defoggers I think all it takes is one snowfall in the winter when you're struggling with a windshield that constantly fogs up and frosts over. Absolute misery pulling over and scraping the inside of your windshield. My dad once told me a story about his grandmother refusing to fly in planes because she didn't want to get her hair all messed up from the wind. I'm picturing her flying with Red Baron Snoopy as the pilot. My 89 years old mom pays for cable but insists on watching only PBS and occasionally NBC, CBS or ABC. The other channels are too much technology to find on the remote. She also buys multiple boxes or cans of food, dates them in Sharpie marker, records the price, less coupon or sale special, and has a rack of all her finds. She will never eat all the oatmeal or beans in our collective lifetimes. But she was a depression era child so I get why the urge to stock up on food is strong. My great grandmother was from the depression era, she saved everything. 
While going through her house after she passed she had many 7 unnecessary boxes. But the one that stands out to me was a box of twine and string that was labeled string too short to keep. My grandfather and I laughed all day at that box. Bless her soul she was awesome. Edit, I'm so happy that my most upvoted comment is about my great grandmother. She would be tickled to death to know that she gave this many people a smile. Thank you from her. Edit 2. You all have brought me tears of just knowing a smaller part of my great grandmother's life. I just called my grandfather to tell him, her son, and he told me you guys are the reason she lived to give. Sheb played piano in the church, and cooked for every feast they had. He said she didn't care what anyone thought, she just wanted everyone to love, be happy, laugh and be well fed. Thank you he got chocked up trying to say that. She was great and I know she wants you all to be happy. So just for today make someone else happy if you can. Just say hello or buy them a coffee. I do remember her saying the key to happiness is making some else happy for the day and I live with that in my mind every day. Like and subscribe for more daily reddit videos.